What's going on guys, it's Omni York, and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my free to play archer guide for Rise of Kingdoms. Now I've gotten some really good feedback on my infantry guide and my cavalry guide and I wanted to release this video sooner, um, but they released Kiera as a new archer commander for the epic tier which is really great for free to play players and so i wanted to delay this video slightly because i wanted to be able to think of some different builds that i could use with kiera to incorporate her into this video now the first thing i want to get out of the way at the beginning of this video is which civilization should you pick as a free to play archer player now there's four different um there's four different civilizations that focus on archers um there is britain with five percent attack and the longbowmen there is china with no specific archer buff but they do have the archer special unit uh chu konu there's also korea which has the five percent defense bonus and the Huarang special unit and we also have the ottoman empire which has the 5% archer health and the Janissary. Now for free to play players, I would recommend either Britain or key or Korea. Um, the reason is because Ottoman empire is better for players with really high skill damage. And those commanders are more legendaries and it's harder to get those as free to play. So I would recommend either Britain or Korea. Again, China isn't really a specific archer, uh, civilization except for their special unit. Um, and yeah, I, I just don't think that China is great for free to play Britain. Their longbowman has the statistically highest attack out of any of the special archer units and they have the five percent archer attack buff which is nice um so that's a great option there plus five percent troop training speed is good for um, free to play korea the Huarang actually statistically had the highest defense out of any of these special archer units and they have the five percent archer defense buff which is nice 15% hospital capacity is great for any player, but also good for free to play for sure. And you get 3% research buff, which is great. I mean, that doesn't sound like much, but when your next research takes 110 days, 3% is significant. So I would suggest either Britain or Korea. It's up to you. But again, uh, these are very small buffs. So if you picked the wrong civilization or not one that I recommended in this video, you can always change it later. Um, you do get a free civilization switch at, at one of the city hall levels. It's one of the lower ones. I don't remember. I think it's 10 or something like that um, or 12 but um you can always change it later uh and so i wouldn't worry about this too much but with that being said britain or korea those are my two recommendations whichever one you prefer that's what i would go with with that being said let's talk about the commanders for archers and we're going to talk about which commanders and who to pair them with and also what are the best um talent builds for these specific commanders now let's look at the let's look at the characters right like let's who are we going to be talking about this video well mostly epics right and later in the video we're going to talk about some legendaries that are five one 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 totally obtainable by free to play players um but for the for the beginning of the video let's talk about just free to play right just free to play Kusunoki is really interesting. His primary skill has a very unique effect where it will remove all negative and control effects from his army, which is great. If he has a debuff on him, he can use when his active skill goes off, that debuff is removed. Super unique. Not that many commanders have it. If any, I think he might be the only one. Uh, there may be another, but for the most part, Kusunoki is the most common with this, um, with this effect. He also has a little bit of active skill damage and a lot of uh, additional damage factor. He also in the epic tier it gives you the most amount of archer buff a 30 percent buff 15 to attack and 15 to defense he also deals additional damage factory here so what's important to know about kusunoki he's focused on archers he has an aoe he also buffs archer uh stats and he also deals a lot of additional damage factor right which is different from just straight up damage factor additional damage factor is dealt over time now he does have the archer garrison and skill tree which is the same skill trees as herman who is the second person we're going to be talking about in this video um the thing to know about herman is unlike kusunoki he has a single target damage factor no no additional just one single large damage factor of 1150 when he's expertise he has a very unique silence type of ability where for two seconds the enemy can't use their active skill damage and we're going to talk about that later i have a build specifically for that he also reduces some rage he also buffs the archer units uh 10 attack and 10 march speed which makes him the fastest commander 
to lead archers on the battlefield he also has a 10 percent chance of increasing uh normal attack damage and um triggering a 100 rage regeneration which is super super interesting so these are the two main ones right because they come from silver keys they come from gold keys they've been around the longest in the game and you can convert your universal epic commander sculptures into either herman or kusunoki the third commander we're going to be talking about primarily is the uh, newest epic in the game is kiera at the time of recording this she is the newest she's also an archer and skill damage commander but also has the peacekeeping tree which is interesting but for the most part we're going to be using both the archer and skill trees what you need to know by kara is that she also does aoe damage just like kusunoki except instead of it being mostly additional damage factor it is direct damage factor which means it just deals the damage right away and you don't have to wait for it to deal damage over time she also has a 10 percent increase to both attack and defense for a total archer buff of 20 percent, which is a little bit less than kusunoki but it does stack really well so that's something we're going to be talking about later and her fourth skill is probably her best skill and she has a 10 percent chance of the enemy me taking 80 percent more skill damage right so we're gonna be we have a build specifically for this as well so those are the three epic archer commanders in the game and we've talked about exactly what role each one plays so with that being said let's start to talk about some of the talent builds and pairings that we can do because we have three commanders how can we mix and match them into unique specific builds well one combination that we could do is kusunoki with herman right this is probably the most common combination that you could do it doesn't matter which one is primary because they have the same talent trees right so it doesn't matter which one's primary but you could do herman uh, and kusunoki as a skill damage build and the way that this would look and the way that i would build them if you decide to pair these two together what you could do is actually this build right here and what this is going to do it's going to have again these two commanders have great synergy because they're both focused on archers buffing archers specifically um and they both have a little bit of aoe from kusunoki and a little bit of single target damage from herman so they are this is kind of like a very general build for archers right it's just a general build we have a lot of rage regeneration coming from feral nature and from rejuvenate we have more rage regeneration coming from razor sharp over here i also made my way up to venomous sting which increases active skill damage by eight percent this is primarily for herman but you know kusunoki benefits slightly we also got the three percent attack for archer units over in this area here we put one point into latent power because you get a little bit of extra additional skill damage out of kusunoki by doing that but of course if you don't like that you could always move that to somewhere else right Right? um i don't know where else you would put it you could put it here i guess but really I, that's probably your best um this is probably your best build for those two and again this is a very general archer build um these two commanders are the easiest to obtain out of all the ones that we're going to be talking about in this video so this is like your general go-to archer build now remember i said it doesn't matter which one is the primary and which one is the secondary um whoever you build primary for this build i would build the secondary in this formation right so again if we build um kusunoki like this i would build uh herman like this and vice versa it's up to you um i would probably recommend building herman in this fashion um and kusunoki in this fashion but it really doesn't matter uh it's really up to you i'll i'll clarify that in a minute um but again if you build one like this build the other like this and vice versa and if you switch the roles right so if we continue to have kusunoki and herman this is a more general damage build this is a more single target damage build right so this focuses on dealing as much damage as possible to a single target and the reason for that is because as you can see here we take some skill points away over here and we put them over in the whistling arrows talent as well as the phoenix tail arrows talent uh, and what this does is you have a 10 percent chance to increase damage dealt by 25 percent for two seconds which is really great when it pops off and if you're lucky herman's skill damage will fall right in that window and you'll deal an insane amount of damage um, and so this is great for single target again phoenix tail arrows gives you a little bit of additional damage factor of 200 with a 10 percent chance of that popping off but you do still get the rage regeneration from rejuvenate now what you could actually do is take these three points away right because we're not going to be doing a ton of additional skill damage you could take these these three points away and and work your way up to this march speed which i think might be actually a better option for this build um because again this is this is mainly for single target damage and while this will help you a little bit i think the march speed is probably a little bit better because plus along the way you can either get uh, one extra health point um or one extra health percentage point as well as three percent march speed or you could increase the heraldic shield up to six percent damage reduction from skill damage as well as half a percentage of attack point 
um, I would probably go this route to get the March speed if you could if you wanted to um, so that's another thing that you could do so we talked about a general skill damage build this what you're looking at here if we move these points here to here would be a, a single target damage right it's just you versus one enemy whereas this is a more general like it does damage to one enemy but it also deals damage in aoe um, and it has some more rage regeneration because of that so we talked about single target damage with this build here but what we could do if we wanted to build a really powerful aoe damage army we could actually pair kusunoki and instead of instead of herman we could pair him with kiera now again it doesn't matter which one is primary and which one is secondary because they both have the archer and skill trees however the build i would go with looks just like this and we talked about this before but the reason that it's better to build this when you have kusunoki and kiera um again we talked about this build is kind of it's it does general damage when you pair it with herman but when you pair kusunoki and kiera together they're both aoe commanders right they're both aoe commanders and so what this is going to do is maximize the amount of rage regeneration that we have and that way kiera is pumping out a ton of aoe with her primary skill if her fourth skill pops off then you have the potential of doing insane damage with both her and kusunoki's primary skill if they line up pretty nicely um but that would actually be if you're looking for an aoe build kusunoki and kiera with this being the primary talent build again it doesn't matter which one is primary because they both have this option that would be your best aoe build for um, free to play epic archer commanders now we could also do something a little bit more creative too we could do something a little bit more creative um, if we wanted to do an aoe army that is also focused on debuffing we can do something a little bit interesting we could do a kiera primary right having her primary with the skill tree that i just showed you and then we can put ethel fled as a secondary and Ethel Flood is definitely free to play. You can't buy her. You have to earn her over time by playing the game. And you can definitely max her out and expertise her as free to play. Um, but what I would recommend is a Kiara primary. Full skill tree like I just showed you with Kusunoki. Ethel Flood secondary. And the way that I would compose their army, right? Previous to this, every build we've talked about was full archers. If we do this with Kiara primary, Ethel Flood secondary, I would bring 80% archers. 10% infantry, 10% cavalry. Now, the reason for this is because Ethel Fled's fourth skill gives you a 20% damage buff if you have at least three different troop types, which is really interesting. So, what does Ethel Fled bring to the table, right? Because she's not an archer commander, right? Well, she has a really nice AoE, which pairs nicely with the rage regeneration that we're going to get from the skill tree from Kiera. She also has a 30% debuff to attack defense and health for two seconds for the enemy that she's attacking right super super good and her aoe is up to five uh enemies in a forward facing fan shaped area whereas uh, kira is only three enemies so if we pair kira with ethel fled with the skill tree uh being fully maxed out we are gonna have what looks like this and again i'm showing kusunoki's talents because i have them at 60 but it doesn't really matter because they have they all have the same trees but this is what i would be looking like so we would have kiara primary with this build ethel flood secondary 80 percent of the troops are going to be archers to to get the benefits that you get from the defense the march speed you also get full quiver for archer attack so you're really maximizing the benefits of the archer tree but you're also getting the 20 percent damage buff from ethel fled's fourth skill by bringing a little bit of mixture into that army as well you're also going to get a ton of rage regeneration from feral nature and from rejuvenate um and that's going to enable ethel fled and kira to pop off their active skills as much as possible the way that i would use this aoe debuffing army is if an enemy counter rallies your rally or even if they're just rallying one of your um your structures like a fort or a flag you can actually use this army kiera primary with ethel fled secondary to debuff the heck out of that army right because you're going to be using ethel fled to lower their attack defense and their health by 30 percent 
their active skills are going to go off a ton because of Kira built with the skill tree. And Kira has a 10% chance of that army taking 80% more skill damage, which not only will come from Kiara and Ethelflaed, but from whatever is defending the structure, right? So if there's an Isong Ye on the wall, suddenly that rally is going to start taking tons of damage because you're debuffing, debuffing it like crazy with Ethelflaed and Kira. I think that's a super unique and super interesting use for Kiara building her just like this with ethel Flet as the primary and again this is the only time in the video that i'm going to recommend not bringing full archers because you want a little bit of mixture in there just to get the 20 percent buff from ethel Flet. so that is a nice little debuff unique army that you can build and i highly recommend that i think even players who are pay to win are probably going to use that build um, in some form or fashion to counter rally or even to swarm down and debuff an, an enemy t5 player who may be really overwhelming so it's at this point in the video that i'm going to start talking about three different builds that can use a legendary commander at 5111 now a legendary commander at 5111 is definitely obtainable by free to play players but it is technically less free to play than the builds that we've talked about here so let me just recap the completely free to play build that we've talked about we have kusunoki and herman paired together with the full skill tree that you see here that is a general damage build that pops off skills pretty rapidly we have the single target damage build with both herman and kusunoki built in this fashion which gives you a lot more single target damage because of whistling arrows and with phoenix tail arrows but you will be popping off your skills less often we talked about a full aoe build with both kusunoki and kiara with this talent build um that is again focused on dealing a ton of damage in a fan-shaped area so this is great for group fights for murder balls kvk this will be a great use for your your archer units and then we talked about a debuffing mixed aoe army with kiara built just like this except instead of kusunoki secondary it would be an ethel flood secondary so those four builds are completely free to play let's talk about some legendary commanders at 5111 and how we can utilize them effectively because a lot of free to play players want to use legendaries but they don't have the option of completely expertising them right the first build we're going to talk about involves herman primary with el Cid secondary so if you remember when we talked about herman earlier we talked about his primary skill silencing the target for two seconds that's really interesting interesting because if you look at El Cid, his primary skill silences and disables them for a single second. So that has really great synergy with Herman. And this is the only pair in the game where you can get a three second silence out of an army, right? So the way that this works is you build Herman primary because he is an epic. It'll be easier to get him to level 60. And I would actually build him the same way that I've been showing throughout this video. Um, it looks just like this. The reason that you want to do this is because you want the most amount of rage regeneration possible. Um, so this is how I would build Herman primary looks just like this. Um, and then what you could do is have Elsid secondary. And the way that that would work, right, is that Herman's active skill goes off, right? It deals the big damage factor. The second after that, that target is silenced, right? The, the turn after that, they're still silenced from Herman's primary and El Cid's active skill is going to go off and deal a thousand damage factor. The second after that, they're going to be silenced for one more second because of El Cid. So you really get a three second um, silence from Herman primary El Cid secondary, right? Which is super, super interesting. Very unique. This is great for um, attacking enemies who are pumping out tons of active skill damage or somebody like uh, Richard who has a full infantry army and is healing a ton with richard's primary skill you can silence that for three seconds at a time every time it goes off and the reason that we built the skill tree is because you want that three second silence to pop off as often as possible and that that silence is triggered by herman's active skill so the more rage you have the better elsid also brings more to the table as well because he does have a 10 percent chance of dealing an additional 500 damage factor which is cool he'll also increase your archer's defense by 10 percent and a five percent march speed bonus which is great when this is at one and when your army drops below 50 percent of units it'll increase all of your damage and your march speed by five percent so that's cool so Elsid at 5111 pairs really nicely with Herman. You could do that as well. Now, we talked about a really great AoE build before with Kiera and Kusunoki, but what if you wanted to take it to the next level? What if you wanted to do 
even more AoE damage. How could you do that? Well, you could do Kiara primary with the same skill build we've been showing, and you could also have Yi Song Ye as your secondary if you have him 5-1-1-1. Now, Yi Song Ye is famous for his AoE. He brings a 1400 damage factor into a fan-shaped area and damages up to five targets, which is insane. He also will be bringing a 10% chance of regenerating 50 rage and the 10% chance of increasing your archer's attack by 50%, which is really good. He has a little bit of uh, you know, passive for the garrison, but that's irrelevant at one. And then he also increases active skill damage by 20%. If there's only a single skill point into his final skill, it increases all active skill damage by 20%. This pairs really well with Kiara because her active skill damage is is already pretty high right it's pretty high it's already at a thousand so isonge is going to buff this by 20 percent, which is great and the kicker is if kiera's fourth skill goes off which it has a 10 percent chance of happening if it goes off and isonge hits them with his primary skill with a 1400 damage factor they will take a massive nuke right they will take massive amounts of damage from isonge so i think this pairing is really great Kiara primary, Isonge secondary, focused heavily on AoE damage. And the way that I would build that actually looks just like this. Um, really, really great for generating rage, again, with Feral Nature and with Rejuvenate. Plus, you still have Venomous Sting over here, which increases your active skill damage by another 8%, which is super, super good. Now, one thing to know with Kiara primary, Isonge secondary, is that this point in latent power is pretty much useless. So you actually should take this and probably put it like uh, in rapid fire or something like that, because neither Kiara nor Isonge do significant amounts of additional skill damage, if at all. I actually don't think that they do any additional skill damage at all. So um, take this point out and put it somewhere like rapid fire, um, because then you're essentially just going to, you'd be wasting this point if you put it here with that specific build. Build, right so kira primary isonge secondary built just like this except move this point over to here and that will be a crazy good aoe build and finally this final build is with a legendary commander that is only usable by really old kingdoms or if you're watching this video in the distant future um this final build involves a 5-1-1-1 Ramses, right? This is one of the newest commanders in the game. He is super, super good at 5-1-1-1. So let's take a look at what Ramses does when he's 5-1-1-1. His first skill does 800 damage factor over the course of two seconds, and it lowers their defense by 25% for that period. So that's really good. That's essentially a 1600 damage factor, right? Really, really great. Now, the key to this is it's not dealing a single 1600 damage factor blow it's actually dealing 800 additional damage factor over two seconds which is super crucial his second skill is going to give him a 20 percent buff to archer attack right only a single point in this skill will give your army 20 percent archer attack which is really really good for one skill point really good right the downside of this is that it doesn't apply when you're in a flag or fortress but you're not going to be defending a flag or fortress as a free-to-play player so really most of your damage with this army is going to come from on the map and that's what this talent is for or i'm sorry this skill is for his third skill has a 10 percent chance um to when attacked to increase your attack by 20 percent and march speed by 20 percent for three seconds and it decreases the skill damage that you take by 10 percent so it's really great, right? That's really great. I think this is better than pretty much all the epics, right? I mean, these two skills are better than expertise epics that we've been talking about already, right? And on top of that, he also, his normal attacks have a 10% chance to heal slightly wounded units by a healing factor of 200 and increase your defense by 20%. So you're getting health regeneration. You're getting defense. You're getting attack. You're also reducing skill damage taken. Ramses at 5111 is incredibly good, right? He's incredibly good. So we can actually pair Ramses 5111 with Kusunoki as primary, right? Kusunoki as primary and build them in a way to deal insane amounts of additional skill damage. So what does that look like? Well, the way that I would build them too would look just like this. This is super interesting, right? Because again, we talked about Ramses primary skill deals crazy damage. 
but instead of a single blow it's over additional damage of over two seconds right so what we can do is maximize the amount of times that this goes off by getting feral nature and rejuvenate we can put three points into latent power to enhance the additional skill damage that it does by six percent then we can go over here and grab razor sharp to get even more rage regeneration and then we can go over here and grab phoenix tail arrows which is another additional damage factor of 200. now again this is a 10 percent chance of going off but this build is focused around additional skill damage, which Ramses does a ton of, which is buffed by latent power, which will happen more often because of razor sharp rejuvenate and feral nature. And guess what? Kusunoki also does a ton of additional damage factor, right? Look at his first skill. He's dealing 250 over two seconds. So that's another 500 damage factor, which will benefit from all of the talent buffs that we just showed. He also has the 10% chance of dealing another 450 over two seconds, which is 900 damage factor. So Kusunoki is real. A lot of his damage comes from additional damage factor, just like Ramsey's. And this talent build that I just showed you is optimizing additional skill damage with latent power and with Phoenix tail arrows. Now we do have an extra point. We put it in full quiver for an extra 1% of archer attack, but you could technically put it wherever you want. It's up to you. But I personally think that that's your best option. And with that being said, guys, that's all of the builds that I wanted to share with you guys. Again, the, the first part of this video was all free to play. And that last three builds that I showed you are slightly less free to play, but definitely attainable. If you do focus on where you're putting your universal legendary commander sculptures, um, if you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them down in this comment section below or if you have any recommendations or more comments about archers for free to play i would love to hear you in the comment section below i really would appreciate that make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it helps my channel out a ton more than you know i'm sure of course if you're new around here subscribe to my channel and click that bell so you're notified the next time that i upload more rise of kingdoms videos in the description is also my twitch which you can check out if i'm live even if i'm not playing rise of kingdoms which i have been playing a little bit more lately over on twitch but even if i'm not playing it you can stop by and ask me whatever questions you want and i will be more than happy to answer those questions for you in real time without having you know you don't have to wait for me to read your comments and reply and as a fun little announcement for the end of the video for those of you who have sticked around all the way to the end um i did actually yesterday become a official media contributor for the rise of kingdoms discord channel which is super cool i'm super happy to be able to directly share my rise of kingdoms content with the official discord for the game um so if you guys want i'll put the link in the description below for the official rise of kingdoms discord it is super populated with a ton of people who are very passionate about this game um and i'm sure there are many players there who are more more knowledgeable than i am um and so if you have any questions and stuff like that it's a really great community i'll put the link in the description below but i am now officially um a media contributor for the game that does not mean that i'm being compensated monetarily or anything like that it just gives me a little bit of a, a little extra privilege a little extra perk where i can directly share my content with the members of that discord which i'm really really grateful for and i'm super happy to be a part of that program and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace